everybody. Uh, sorry, there's a air conditioner going in here that's kind of loud, so I hope you can hear me. I'll try to talk really loud. Uh, hopefully you have watched the welcome video and have an idea about what's going on. Um, one of the things that I went over then, but I'm going to emphasize again today, because I think it's really important, is that you navigate on Canvas by the modules page, not the assignments, not the uh, assignments tab. So you can see Canvas here before me. Uh, here's um, our home page. There's a little link to the welcome video where I kind of walk you through how to navigate the course. And then here's the modules page. So you should be going here whenever you're going to see what's going on. So hopefully, uh, I know some of you have already made your introduction posts, which is great. And several of you have done your looking at art practice work, which is awesome. It's where you're looking at this work of art, which I'm going to kind of reveal and tell you more about it uh, a little bit later. But you're going to look at this work of art and then you're going to tell me what you see in it. Um, and it's really just practice talking about describing writing about art. And before you do that, hopefully you clicked here and went in and watched the looking at art video to get some kind of tips on that. Um, then the next things coming up are in our next module, which is isms. So uh, I'm not going to tell you all the things that I told you in the welcome video. Basically, just go to the modules page and you can keep up with, with what's going on. But what I did want to show you is the course syllabus. Okay, so when we're on the home page, uh, uh, this has changed pretty recently. I think last semester was the last time that we did this. So you used to just click here where it says syllabus and then just like a PDF would pop up with the syllabus. Um, well, at OTC we've changed how we do that. So now you scroll down and you go to where it says course syllabus, so a little bit lower down. And when you click on that, it's kind of neat because it's this fully integrated version of the syllabus. So all of the instructors input everything directly into Canvas instead of making a separate document and then like uploading a PDF or something. So you can skip to any of the information by clicking on these tabs. So like if you go here, it goes you down to there. If you want to go here, it goes down here, that kind of thing. So it's kind of interactive and you can navigate. I'm not going to read you the syllabus. You're adults, your college students, you can all read. Um, but I am going to go through a couple of things that are kind of the highlights that are usually things that people are looking for when they look at a syllabus and the information they want. Um, so basically, this is an online class. Here's the dates the class runs. Here's our uh, section number and all that kind of stuff. Um, and basically, because it's an online class, you do need to check Canvas regularly and you also need to check your OTC email because sometimes I'll send you information via email. So in the past, I've taught online and hybrid and seated classes. I've taught all the kinds of classes many, many times. I've been teaching for like a decade, so I've done all the things. Um, but the times that students in online classes run into trouble is when they aren't checking in regularly and when they aren't checking their email. So if there's something going on with your grade, generally I'll reach out to you and be like, hey, what's going on? Can I help? How can I support you? But if you don't check your email, then there's it's hard for me to communicate with you. Um, because it's an online course, my office hours are by appointment. Also, it's the summer, so I don't have normal office hours during the summer. So if you want to email me, there's my OTC email address. Um, if you have a question about something or need help with something, you're welcome to reach out to me at any time by email. Um, and you can totally schedule an appointment to meet with me. We can meet via Zoom. I can meet you on campus, whatever. Um, I actually live right by campus, so it's very convenient for me. Um, for this class, materials-wise, I've kind of cut it down a little bit. We're not going to use a textbook. We're just going to use um, kind of information from the text and the lectures I've made based on the text. And then we're going to uh, need a little bit of materials to do some of the exercises, okay? So you are going to need like a sketchbook, which can be your choosing. It can be big. It can be small. I do prefer that it's not lined paper. I prefer that it's blank pages in the sketchbook for you to work on. Um, and then you'll need things like a pencil, a pen, pretty basic stuff. So the materials are there. Here's the course description, which you are probably familiar with. I'm sure you read it when you were signing up for the course. Um, here are all of the course objectives. This is pretty basic kind of stuff. Visual literacy. I want you to become familiar with some kinds of artworks and major artworks and genres. Um, we're going to be better at describing artwork and talking about it analyzing qualities of artwork, cultural literacy, 
um, different kinds of processes surrounding the making of art, and of course critical thinking, which anything you take in fine arts and humanities, you're going to learn critical thinking because it's kind of the backbone of the department. Um, I do put a little warning here that some of the images we look at in this class contain uh, the nude human form because it's an art class. So we, we look at some paintings and things. In fact, in our first one of our first exercises looking at art, we look at a, a nude painting. So if that's something that's upsetting or offensive to you, this is maybe not the best class for you. I am happy to provide other um, alternative imagery for you to do some of the assignments, but in the lectures and things, sometimes that just comes up. We're looking at historical works of art and some of them feature the nude human form. So if that's gonna be a problem, um, you can talk to me about it and we can see if we can work it out, but this maybe isn't the best class for you. Uh, then, of course, if you've been at OTC, um, you're familiar with the core experience competencies. We're part of the Core 42 program, which is this super rad program where um, you can take classes here and then they transfer pretty much anywhere in Missouri that participates in Core 42. So I'm sure you're very familiar with these core competencies. You probably see them in all your classes. Um, and then this is the part that people are always really interested in. So this is grading. So I give you a full breakdown of what you're going to be graded on from the beginning. So basically, you're going to have exercises, which are smaller assignments. I say they're all worth 10 points. That's not totally true. There are a few that are worth more than 10 points and a few that are worth uh, less than 10 points. But it all works out to them being worth 10 points, basically, and in average. So you have 150 points worth of exercises this semester, and those are usually kind of smaller, simpler sort of tasks. Then you have two assignments, and those are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit more in depth. They have multiple steps. You have to really think about them uh, to get them ready. Then you have Flipgrid assignments, which a couple of you have already done your first Flipgrid. And what that is, especially for online classes, we need to have things that are either proctored events or are something where we see your face and know that it's you doing the assignments, basically. So flip grids are my favorite way to do that. They're kind of a nice, just um, casual kind of discussion response kind of program. So I really appreciate them. I think you'll like them. They're pretty chill. So we have um, about 10 of those this semester. They're worth five points a piece. Um, and I generally go through and record responses to all of those too. So you'll you'll get some one-on-one -on -one time with me via uh, Flipgrid. You have four quizzes this semester and they're worth 10 points each. They're just over vocabulary that's covered in the lectures and I really let you know what's going to be on those quizzes. I, it's nothing sneaky or surprising. And then participation points, we have about 50 points to play with there. And a lot of that comes from your discussion posts. So the, the, all the discussion posts in this class are graded that all goes into participation. Also, um, kind of, I'm really lenient about late work, but if you turn things in readily and on time and are really on top of it, like you're participating and paying attention, that ups your participation grade. Um, so, so that's that grouping of points. And then your final exam is worth 50 points. It is comprehensive, so it does kind of hit on all of the things that we talk about this semester but I give you a really comprehensive review for it. So you have um, about a week out from the exam, you have a review sheet and there isn't anything on the exam that isn't on the review sheet. So generally people ace it, generally people do pretty well on it. Um, and then the basic, you know, the grading scale. Um, and then under criteria, I always just say, if you do the work, you'll do fine. Um, this isn't a technical high level um, art studio class, you know, I don't expect you to come in with tons of technical skill for these exercises where you're making things and drawing things and doing things. Basically, if you do the, if you try, if you do the work, if you do the exercises and the assignments and everything, you'll do fine in this class. It's, it's mostly about putting in the effort and participating and showing up. So that's really a pretty simple criteria. Um, I do always point this out, the academic grievance contact. Uh, this should be in all of the syllabi that you encounter uh, at OTC. But basically, if you have a problem with something in the class, if you think something's wrong with your grade, if you think something's unfair, or I screwed something up, or you're worried about something, first contact me. Um, if that doesn't give you a resolution that you feel comfortable with, if, that, um, if you don't feel like you can contact me, the next person you would contact is my supervisor, who's the chair of the department, and her name is Kat Alley. That's her real name. Isn't that a cool name? Cat Alley. She's pretty awesome. So her uh, phone number and her email are right here. And then if that doesn't give you the resolution you want, then the next person up is our general education 
Dean, who is uh, Dr. Renner, and I put his information in here as well. And that's just being straightforward. I want you to have a good experience in this class. I try to support all my students to the best of uh, my ability to bring out the best of your ability. That's why I'm here. I really want you to do well. Um, and if something's wrong, I want to fix it. So I put right in there, like, contact me. And if that doesn't work, here are my bosses. Contact them. Um, I already talked about proctored events. Um, academic integrity. This is a hard class to cheat in, but don't cheat, basically. You know, I just want to hear your, your thoughts and ideas. Um, so don't copy them. Don't copy things from Wikipedia and post them. Give me your own thoughts. And it's kind of a great class for that because you don't have to really cite anything. It's not really formal, like uh, say my art history classes are a little more formal. In this one, we're really just saying what we think and looking at work and, and kind of exploring artworks and art uh, in general and talking about what it makes us think of and, and, and what our analysis of it is. So it'd be weird to cheat in this class, it doesn't really make sense. Um, administrative withdrawal. Administrative withdrawal is kind of weird for online classes, but it is still effective. So if you um, are, if you've been going to OTC for a while, you're familiar with this. If you miss um, 14 consecutive calendar days in a class, then you're automatically withdrawn from the class. That's just OTC policy. I can't do anything about that. That's just how it is. So since it's not a seated class for online, they, uh, and they is not actually me, uh, they, they monitor when you log in and check into the class. So if you haven't turned anything in and you haven't been checking in on Canvas for 14 consecutive days, I will get an email saying we're dropping this person from your class because they have not been participating. So just make sure that you keep up with everything. And we have lots of exercises and things that you should be doing. So it, it should be pretty easy to keep up and they're kind of just little bites of things. So it should be pretty easy. But don't think that because it's an online class, you can get away with not having to worry about administrative withdrawal because it's still definitely a thing. Okay. Um, all the disability support services information is here. And one of the cool things about this being integrated instead of being a PDF is everything's live. So you can get any information you need right here. Um, and then this is just a great list of college resources. And again, because it's integrated directly into Canvas, you can click any of these and get all the information that you need. Then at the bottom is the schedule, and I'm going to work on getting the rest of this um, plotted out and input today, um, maybe tomorrow. But the first two weeks are up, and the first two weeks are up in Canvas as well. So basically, uh, in online classes, I do it week by week rather than day by day. But it just kind of goes over what we're doing this week. And again, if you just go to the modules tab, you see the specific dates for everything there. But I also like to have this in the schedule on the syllabus so you can see what's going on. This looks like a lot of stuff. Not all of this stuff is due in the first week. It's just kind of we start talking about it in the first week and then a lot of it's due in the second week. Um, it's not really that much stuff. None of these things are super in depth and involved. It doesn't take that much of your time. But basically, I'll fill out the rest of the schedule so you'll have every week of this semester, this summer, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So that is the uh, syllabus. So again, to get to that, you want to go from the home page. And you just scroll down over here. And it's not the first one that says syllabus. It's down here at uh, course syllabus is where that is. Okay. And then again, just make sure instead of going to assignments, you're going to modules because some of the assignments you can't do if you don't watch the videos and the other information in the modules. So the first two weeks of stuff is all set up for you here. And then I'll keep adding things as we move through the semester. I don't like to add things more than two weeks in advance usually because I don't like you to work really far ahead. I like you to keep in pace with the class. So we're all having the experience of the class at the same time. Okay, so that is the syllabus. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you message me on Canvas, it goes to my email, so that's totally fine as well. And I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you. Uh, so get those introductions posted, and I look forward to working with you this summer. All right, I hope you have a great rest of your day.